Hi everyone, my name is Tonya Wale and welcome to our very first tutorial for Fallout 4. Today I'm going to show you how to download and use Mod Organizer 2 created by Tenon and uploaded by El Presidente for Fallout 4. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a mod manager that allows your mods to download safely and correctly without having to touch your data folder for Fallout 4. I highly, highly recommend you learn how to use this tool and learn how to use it well. I will be providing you guys a tutorial series for Fallout 4 on how to download and use Mod Organizer 2 for Fallout 4 directly. This manager allows for, for uh, a virtual virtual data folder for your mods, keeping them organized and keeping them properly um, set away from the data folder of Fallout 4. So instead of where mod, Nexus Mod Manager would download the mods directly into your data folder, Fallout 4 keeps, a Mod Organizer 2 keeps your data folder um, looking very pretty and very, very uh, nice. It keeps it pretty much vanilla from the, from the actual problems that you may have in game, okay? Now, why would you want a virtual data folder? When you're installing mods, they can have conflicts. And so when you have a, a data folder filled with different meshes, textures, scripts and other sources like BD BDSAs, you, it's very hard sometimes to go into your data folder and search for all these mods and all these different textures and meshes to find out which one is causing a conflict directly with your game when you install it directly into the folder. With Mod Organizer 2, when I show you the process, and you'll see that the virtual data folder actually separates each mod into their own little directory, keeping them keeping them away from each other. So that way, when you look for conflicts, it'll be much much easier to to find out which ones um, are are affecting your game and how to deal with them correctly. So, without further ado, if you get the chance from Mod Organizer 2, please make sure you endorse the mod. Okay. And if you can, vote for it because El Presidente and his team at, on, uh, the, have been working tirelessly to make sure that it is 100% stable and working properly. Now, don't get me wrong, it still has bugs and they're still working on those. But they have been updating the, the mod, uh, mod manager uh, very, very well and they've been keeping it maintained. Now, before we get started, on the description, please make sure you check out the what Modernizer 2 does. When you have a chance, read everything thoroughly if, when you have time. And make sure you really kind of go in thorough of looking it through the installation process. I'm going to walk you through this, and I'm going to walk show you the simplistic stuff that you'll need to get started, okay, for Fallout 4. Now, if you need to contact the, the dev team directly, they do have a link on their uh, description page for the next for the Nexus page for Fallout 4. There, and it'll take you straight to the Discord. I recommend getting a hold of them through here since they can actually get a hold of you much much quicker than you would the mod page. Now you can still do the mod page, but they may you but you may not get as much help as quickly as you'd like. Okay, but like I said, you can you have the mod page to, to let you know try to get some help, and you also have the Discord servers. All right, so the first thing, let's go ahead and we're going to start downloading mod um, mod organizer two for um, Fallout Four. Now you're going to go ahead and you click download manually and it should go down to your download folder or wherever you choose to download it directly. If you wish to save as link, you can save the link at anywhere you want in your game. You can put it to your desktop if you so choose. It just really depends on you, okay? Mine now, mine's already in my my uh, download folder. Now you're going to look you'll see it look like this. It'll say Modern Manager 2 standalone version. You're going to right click it and you're going to click the 7-zip, Woothrad, or anything that you use to extract the zip files. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to extract it to your fault to the download folder. All right, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? You just installed Mod Organizer 2 on your computer. It's literally that simple. And I'm going to show you how and why. Once you unzip it, everything's already packed, ready to go for you. It was set up from the get-go, so that way all you got to do is unzip it. But that's not necessarily going to mean it's going to work for Fallout 4. And I'm going to show you uh, how we're going to get this set up and where you can put, put your directory. So, now we have the Mod Organizer 2 directory ready to go. It's installed, but we want it for Fallout 4. I'm going to suggest that you right-click it and you rename it for Fallout 4. So, you can make sure you put um, Mod Organizer 2, Fallout 4. Just in case you do have Skyrim Special Edition or any other game that may, with updated versions of Fallout 4 that may support other games. This is what you might do, okay? So we're going to take Modern Razor 2 and I'm going to place it on my desktop. You can put it on another drive, you can put it anywhere you want on your computer. However, 
Dun dun dun. However, I highly recommend you, and so does the Mod Organizer 2 team, do not put Fallout 4 uh, Mod Organizer 2 directory in the Fallout 4 directory. It will cause problems. <laughs> For some reason, there's a, there seems to be bugs where if you install into the directory into the direct in, into the Fallout 4 directory, um, it will not recognize certain executables for certain users. So I recommend that you don't do that. Okay, the fall the Mod Organizer 2 directory for Fallout 4 will actually automatically find Fallout 4 uh, directory for you once you install it. Now, for this is get this part of the part of the video is going to be for people who've been using Mod Organizer 2 from the old GitHub version, and there's, uh, that 10 and 1 had uploaded for, um, okay, for, for Fallout 4. I'm going to show you how to transfer your old profiles, your old mod lists, your downloads, and your overrides to the new Fallout 4 directory. So first off, we're going to open up, open up a new one here. Okay, awesome. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to your, your, your local hard drive, because this is where it did. This is where the old one would put it. Put your files. You're going to go to users. You're going to go to the name of your computer. You're going to go to app data. And then you're going to go to local. In here, you should find the old mod organizer pro, uh, directory for all your mods, your downloads, your profiles, and etc. You're looking for these four files here. Okay? You want these specific files. Everything else in this folder does not matter. You can go ahead and delete it. You're going to drag and drop it into the new directory. It'll, it, if you have a lot of mods, it'll take a while to, to transfer over, but once they're in there, you're good to go. It's literally that simple. Once you're done, go ahead and delete the directory from here. Copy real quick. I'll just give you an example. And if you had the Fallout 4 uh, modernizer directory inside Fallout 4, you'll delete it. You'll delete it from here, the directory, okay? Now, let's get back to installing um, modernizer 2 for the normal viewers. All you're going to do is click on modernizer 2. Now you have two options. You have the new. If you're just basically going to create your a new game, you can click here. You can click Fallout 4, okay? And now, it, as you can see, it does allow other options for other games. You can do Oblivion, Skyrim, SS, Skyrim SSE, Fallout 3, F and Fallout New Vegas. I recommend, since this is the 64-bit version, that you pretty much stick to Skyrim SE or Fallout 4, since the tool was designed for the 64-bit. You can definitely do Skyrim, Oblivion, if you'd like, but I... There's no guarantees they'll work properly with that. Now, the team... Now, you could talk... For more information on this, I recommend reaching out to the Mod Organizer 2 team and talking with them directly. But for this video, we're going to stick with Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special... Or Skyrim Special Edition. But specifically, Fallout 4. Now, I'm going to load it up again. I'm going to show you the portable version, which I will be using because it's actually much easier on my end. And I'll show you why in a moment. Now, you're going to click on the portable. Now, the portable version automatically finds the Fallout 4 directory for you in your, in your, on your computer. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to click on the Fallout 4 and let it load up. Now, when it loads up, it's going to ask if you want to run a tutorial. If you're new to, to Mod Organizer 2 and work, learning how to use this tool, it is highly, highly recommended after this video, you click on yes for the tutorial. But for this specific video, I'm going to click no since this, you know, is going to be a little bit of, what do you call it, a uh, quick just kind of overview. Now, when it first pops up, it's going to ask you, do you want to add your Nexus account to Mod Organizer 2? So that way you can download mods directly to your Mod Organizer 2 from the Nexus page itself. I'm going to actually recommend that you click yes. Now, you will find your Nexus link in the settings bar up here at the very top. It is a wrench and a little screwdriver. Right here, this is where you'll find it. You're going to go over to the Nexus. You're going to click automatic, and then you're going to put in your pro, the name of your pro, the username for your Nexus mods.com um, profile, and then put in the password. Now, once you've done your password, all you got to do is click OK, and you're good to go. You can start downloading. Um, mods directly to your download folder and it will look like this once you download them but for for, for viewers sake we're going to go ahead and show you just how to download them and it works i'm going to be choosing true storms wasteland edition now if you already have what i showed you which was the profiles installed as you can see when i dropped and dragged it i already had set up a pro a, a small profile already for the old version of next a mod organizer and i uh for fallout 4 
Now, when you install it, it'll have, you know, all the DLC you, you already have, for, but I don't have the DLC, so I'm just using the Fallout for itself, okay, guys? Here, we're, it's going to show you that this is what it will look like, and it'll download it. I'm going to go ahead and download the mod directly. Now, please be warned, anytime you download a mod, please make sure you check the description page on what it has, what it needs, any other mods it may require to use, and, you know, download those as well. This mod is a pretty straightforward mod, so we're going to go ahead and download it directly to the mod manager. Now, when you go to download it, it'll ask if you want to always, you know, these types of links. If you're using, now, if you're using Fallout 4 by itself, I would recommend clicking this as always and then click open. However, I am going to recommend that you, if you have Skyrim SSE or if you're going to be using Nexus Mod Manager along with Fallout 4, that you do not do this since it can cause issues. You would just click the open link, uh, open Nexus link proxy um, and keep it and just literally do that. For this tutorial, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and re-download it, okay? Now, while this is downloading, I'm going to go over a few other things with you about Mod Organizer 2. This is where you're going to find your executables. It'll be under here. Now, if you already have loot installed on your computer, Mod Organizer 2, once you install it and load it up for Fallout 4, will have already detected it, along with if for the, the script extender, which is F4SE for your mods. Now, in another video, I will show you how to download it and install F4SE correctly for Mod Organizer with Mod Organizer 2 for Fallout 4. But for this video, I'm only going to show you the basics of Mod Organizer 2 and how and the installation process. Now, there's two ways to install mods when you click on it. If it has a loader, it's going to you can load it like you normally would. You can also come up here and check on the how if you wish to choose a name for your mod. Or if you want, you can completely rename the mod yourself automatically by putting it in the game. So they just put weather additions here, okay? And now you can go through the installation process like you would here. Or if you want, you can check manually. And I'll show you the process for this. It'll also give you a little tutorial on how to do how to do that as well. The same with the name part is up here as well for the manual. And if you want to basically choose certain parts. So I just walk you through this process real quick. I don't need these since I'm not installing it um, through the installer. Instead, I'm only going to use the mods that don't have Far Harbor. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this mod here. This mod. And I'm going to choose the True Storm's ESP Radiance for times 2. And then I will do... And then that's pretty much good to go. So, And I'll just drag and drop this one in here as well. Why, that's basically me just choosing... The, parts of the mod that I want. I will then right click and I will click set directory. As you can see here, everything looks really, really good and should run properly. Though this may not because of the way I set it up, but it's it should work all right. Okay? Because this is this is a folder and that's not necessarily set up the way these are where I need the ESP. And then I'll click OK. And it'll install the mod like it normally would. Now I'll install it again to the initial, go through the process, click here, click vanilla standard. And sure, I don't, I don't want any Fox. So we'll just go ahead and install it. Click replace. And I, as you can see here, I officially have my mod installed. Okay. Now, I'm going to explain this side and then this side. With Mod Organizer Two, there are two level, there are two mod lists. There are the right hand side for your ESPs and your ESMs. And then there's the left-hand side, which has all the file data for your for your mods, etc., etc. Okay. And it'll tell you whatever mods you have installed, and you would you would basically organize this through loot, and then you would organize this side through. Um, I recommend priorities, but you can organize it any way you want through down here through categories or Nexus IDs, however you so choose to organize it your way. That's the cool thing about the mod manager. You can organize anything that, the way you want. Just please make sure that when you organize, do it through priorities first because it'll help you uh, find out conflicts within your mods. And I'll show you that too. So when you click on the mod itself, you can check the ESP. Now let's say I have the mod, but I don't want early sets in here. All I can do is just pull the ESP out. And as you can see on the left-hand side, it's, it should no, when I close it, it should no longer be there. See? But I want to put it back in. So I come over here. I click on it and then click down. Early Sunset ESP is back in my load order list, and there you go. Now I want. Now let's say it's having a conflict with another mod. You will find the conflict over here. 
It also has categories, what you know, what mod the category is under. It has the Nexus web page you can find, so you can click on the you can visit the Nexus, and it'll take you straight to the Nexus page if you want if you want to go there. Notes that the author may have had if you had any readmes inside, or text files that might have been installed. And you can always check out your file tree with meshes and everything that's installed properly for the game over here on the file tree and, that, and Mod Organizer 2. Alright, and if you want to check your profiles, you would check it here. You go to your profile manager, you would create, copy, remove, rename all profiles. And if you had another save from another profile you wanted to add in just because you created a new mod list, you can do so with that accordingly. Alright, we're going to click close. Now you're going to install new mods manually if you want for, for Fallout 4 through your manual installation or you can right click on here and install it as well through here. If you need to refresh mods you can always refresh your mod organizer too with this. You can back up and all this other stuff. You will find your saves here as you can see I have a ton of them. Your data your download data uh, your data here for the for it. and you can also check out your Fallout 4 archives. Alright and if you need any help you can always check up here as well and find here and one more thing if you have anything in your override folder or if there's any conflicts within the mod list mod organizer 2 will show you right up here this thing will turn red with a little rex with a little exclamation point and it'll show you what you need to do from there if you have any now let's say you're using enb for mod organizer 2 um you're gonna go here and you're gonna basically you can start i'm sorry not here you're gonna go here you're, you're gonna click on here and you're going to click on in file uh, and as you can see it, it actually sees all your in files that you had so if you need to adjust any ENB settings you could do it in here instead of actually doing it in your game path folder which I'll show you right here what so usually you'll find that under my documents my games Fallout 4 and you'll find your um, your any files for Fallout 4 well under here you can do it you can direct you can do it directly with mod organizer 2 if you want and set your mod up list as you normally would. Okay guys, and it's really honestly that simple. All right. So I hope this video has helped you out. I hope you are uh excited to use Mod Organizer 2. Please let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, if you guys like my videos, please go ahead and like and share with your friends. If you like my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. My name is Tonya Wale. Thank you so much for the click and I will see you next time.